circle of Catholicism. Did they ever teach our people what sin was? Yes, it's disobeying God. But see, they, it's crafty. Remember, the heart is deceitful, and they use that. They get up. They need answers. But specifically, how do you disobey God? God is God gave a strict commandment. Okay, that's one of them. But we're going to read specifically how you read God according to the Bible. We go. The book of First John, the three and verse four. That whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's how you disobey God by being in the midst of sin. We get out. Six and twenty-three. The way you disobey God is being in the midst of sin, and sin is the transgression of His law. That's right. You know what I'm saying? They understand that. They said, "Remember what they did. Let's keep them in sin." Why? Because they knew the outcome. Let's read about what happens as long as we're in sin. Read the Book of Romans, chapter six and verse twenty-three. Yeah. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's what they understand. You get what I'm saying? So what is sin? The way of sin is death, but what is sin? How do you okay. think? That's transgression of the law. That's right. Just like in America today, right? A law is, on this road right here, you only can go 25 miles an hour. If you disobey that law, you get what? A ticket. They find you. There's some, some type of judgment that comes behind you breaking that law. Right. It's the same way with God. That's the way of the set of laws that his chosen people must keep. If they don't, I'm not going to deal with them anymore. I, in fact, I'm going to curse them. That's going to be their judgment. These people understood that. That's why they put us in the position to break his law. The so-called white man made these different religions, Baptists, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, the whole world, all these different Christianity religions, Catholicism, to keep us in the midst of the sin. They got to Say again? She said, well, you said that we're not under the law anymore, right? Let's see what the Bible says. You believe in Christ? Christ? Did Christ say we're under the law now? And okay, so with that being said, he died for our sins. What is sin? The transgression of the law. Right? That's what I'm saying. And the judgment of the law is uh, the way of sin is death. So instead of us being in sin and receiving death, he said, I'm going to take that death. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to die so they can go stay in sin. No. He said, I'm going to die for that so they can get themselves right. Now, a certain man came to Christ and he said the same thing. He said, uh, uh, what can I do to keep them together? Let's see what Christ, let's see what Christ says to that man. The book of Matthew, to the 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what do you mean shall I do? I mean, have eternal life. So he asked Christ, What should I do to have eternal life? Read. And he said unto him, Why comest thou be good? There is none good but one. So Christ was a humble man. He said, There ain't nobody good but God himself. Read. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. So Christ himself said, If you want to get into the uh, kingdom of God or the kingdom of Christ, Keep the commandments. The law is not away with. We're still supposed to be keeping the commandments of God. Yeah. We're going to go back. I'm going to give you a commandment that we're supposed to be keeping. Bring it out. You don't have to Bring it out, dog. So again, the transgression of God, all of these statutes and commandments, is death. The wages of sin is death. You understand what I'm saying? So Christ said we're supposed to be keeping the law, right? They lie. These are the men that lie to us. We're still supposed to be keeping His law. Now about to read a law to you that, allow, that they allow us to break. And by them allowing us to break it, they know that death comes behind it. Right. It's a simple law, sis. It's a very simple law. I'm going to read it to you. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. Yeah. The woman shall not wear that which would pertain unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So the Bible says a man should not wear a woman's garment, and a woman should not wear a man's garment. What is that talking about? Exactly. A man is not supposed to put on a dress just like that for a woman's woman, and a woman is not supposed to put on what? But his man is supposed to, but you got to be specific. You're dealing with God. He's not just bathed like that. That's what they're going to do. No, clothing. He said you're not supposed to put on men's clothing. What is the clothing that men wear when it's a pair? Give me that uh, uh, exit where you're talking about something 28, 40. Those are the, the things that God told men not to wear or women not to wear is men. But when you look around today, you are sisters and parents? Yeah, they are. But the problem is, they don't know that they're breaking God's law. They don't understand that God's law. A lot of people try to 
said, well, these are women pants. Have you ever seen a man dress? You seen a man dress before? Does it look like it's made for a man? Or does it, exactly, right? It still looks like it's for a woman. When you see a man wearing a dress, do you, do you look at him and be like, oh, he can protect me? Oh, he looks masculine, man? No, right? You look like, based off of his appearance, he looks destroyed. Look, you know what I'm saying? He's walking around like a woman. Read that. The book of Exodus, the tweet. And verse 4, reality for Aaron's sons. So it says for Aaron's sons, right? This is how he knows that pants were made for men. Read it. Thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bottles shalt thou make for them, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, and shall appoint, anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them. That they may minister to me in the priest's office, and thou shalt come make them living preachers. It says, "What we know part of that part was get you, sis. Read. And thou shalt make them living preachers. So we started at the forties to show you that it's talking to the sons of Aaron. That's it. On his sons, read that part one more time. And thou shalt make them living preachers. You shall make the sons of Aaron living preachers. That's how we know that pants are for men and dresses are for women because right. God made pants for uh, men. So when you walk around and you see sisters in that and all the pants, they let you know you cross dressing and now you're in sin. That's how you learn how to and put on a dress to get that right with God. Nation is men leading by example. Oh.